children listen to Francine And I'll tell you all of tale of how I came to be From above there came a lovely lady sweet and nice From below a fiery femfatel to scratch and bite Now they collided on earth and I rose up from the ass So if you don't like how I'm living you can kiss my ass I said I'm a wild I got plans to style with primal loving. It ain't no case. Gonna keep you shut in. No, you can tame a wild hearted woman. So be careful what you wish for, cause it might come true. You better know just what to do. Why women never get the blues? Big Mama, <laughs> Blues America will be right back. Blues America is supported by Record High Vinyl Store in Phoenix, the place for serious music fans and vinyl collectors to find large quantities of first pressings, limited editions, box sets, audio file, and vintage catalog, including blues, soul, jazz. They buy, sell, and trade, and offer vinyl cleaning and flattening service. Visit the store, located at 4242 East University Drive in Phoenix. Or for more online at recordhighinphoenix.com. Like them on Facebook. Record High in Phoenix. Experience one of the last great record stores. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you. Freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Blues America is supported by the Rhythm Room. The world's famous and historical Rhythm Room Concert Club is Arizona's premier blues hotspot, hosting nightly live music. Located at 1019 East Indian School Road in Phoenix and online at www.rhythmroom.com. Damn right we got the blues. Blues. Blues America. Right now. (laughs) Blues America is supported by the Southwest Musical Arts Foundation. If you just turn this thing on, let me tell you what you're doing. You're listening to Blues America, and I'm your host, Drew Verbis. I'm hanging out at the Chico Chisholm Memorial Studio in Phoenix at 4242 East University Drive, live with today's special guest, blues singer, Alabama Mike. Before the break, we were talking about your uh, different singing styles and how you decide when to try different, doing different things. Um, now, tell me, is it all about experience or the song that you're singing? Or maybe the guys that you're performing with. It's kind of all of the above, you know. When you get some guys that you're comfortable with, and and uh, you know, they kind of got the background, and you guys get to know each other, and they follow me real good. And so I might try some other stuff, you know, that I like. But you know, a lot of times, most of the time, I, I kind of stay uh, stay in the wheelhouse where people I know most of the time they're comfortable. And that is when you kind of on the road and you play with different people and different things like that. But uh, as far as recording, I, I got a new record called Upset the Status Quo coming out in the spring of 16. And uh, it's going to raise a lot of fuss because it's got some different, it's got some different stuff on there. That, but I love it because 
it's all about trying to, it, it, it's modern. It, it, the, the world is moving in a different direction. And, you know, I got a thing with people that, uh, you know, they struggle and they want to be an independent artist. And uh, and then uh, all they do is cover the stuff that everybody did 70 and 80 years ago. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't even understand those messages. In it. I right. mean, the data... In a lot of ways, it makes sense, and I, I pay a lot of respect to the to the to the original music. But if I'm doing a project that's not, it, it doesn't fit in yeah. a lot of ways. So is that what the the thing you did with Kid Anderson? Is that the one? That's yeah, that's the one coming that's out. That's great. With Kid did you do that at Greaseland? Yeah, I did it at Greaseland. Open Air Studio, man, and uh, I got Jerry Jamat on there, and uh, uh, I, and I got uh, Jim Pugh on there, and. Uh, Kid Anderson played on there, Bob Welch, and K.R. Roy, Akasha Kumar, Aki Kumar, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's I got the cream of the crop. Yeah, he's a good hard player. Yeah, man, they, and then and, and the album, you know, I'm so excited about it. Uh, I can't wait. <laughs> Well, it really sounds like your career is taking off. We're talking about your upcoming album with Kid Anderson. And in addition to that, you're doing some great things with Bob Corchor and Big John Ankerson. Uh, hey, man, I'm setting it up. You know, you got to put it down before you can pick up. So, uh, yeah, I met Big John, man. He came up to the Bay Area, and Aki, actually, he Aki set it up. Mm -hmm. And he said, man, you need to make, meet Big John, man. He do a lot of traditional uh, stuff that you like, man. I know you like the traditional stuff. So we went, uh, I met him at the uh, uh, blues jam they call a uh, place they call the Mojo Lounge, right? And uh, we did a number together, and he was like, man, I want you to come down to my festival. So I get down to the festival, Aki and I took a little road trip down, to, you know, from uh, from the Bay to San Diego. And did the festival and after that's where I met Bob and and then but 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 then after that Big John moved up to the he moved he's up near me now he's like an exit away from me so I'm on right <laughs> <laughs> so we right there but we getting some stuff together man it's gonna blow your wig back man it's because that's that's where the stuff he doing some roots straight ahead blues man and we get out we vibe together on that. I tell you what, I got a sneak preview of the upcoming Bob Corchor and Big John Atkinson album on Delta Groove Records. You're featured on a, a few tracks. Let's take a listen to this one. Wow, that, I mean, that sounds like it was recorded uh, in the in Chicago in the 1950s. <laughs> Thank you, Bob Corchor, for allowing us to preview that. Uh, what an amazing blues sound. Exactly. Honey, what you want me to bring? 
You know she quits for low and easy. Mike, let's talk about timing in your blues career. How do you decide when it's time to make a new album? Well, I tell you this, Drew. Uh, what happened in between the day to day and uh, I'm sorry, Taylor Made Blues and the new album I got now? I did a trio. Uh, acoustic blues trio with a group called the Hound Kings we put together yep. and that was with Anthony Paul and Scott Brenton and we put the project out and it just and we weren't able to get uh, because of everybody's schedule and you know uh, it was just wasn't able to give it the attention that it deserved so it kind of fell off and went to the back burner which was a good record it still is out there man um, so in between that time, you know, by me working with these guys and learning, you know, I, I felt like it was time for me to produce my own my own record. So I called Kid, I uh, got with Kid Anderson. He was excited about doing a record, but he told me, he said, Alabama Mike, I want to, I want to produce a session with you, uh, Jerry Jamat, uh, Jim Pugh. Uh, Derek D. Moore Martin on the drum, and, uh, and and also Bob Welsh and himself. And on saxophone we had uh, Bernard Doctor B. Anderson. And we and I said okay. And then he said well, we'll do another session with this, the other guys with Kate Alroy, Aki John Lawton, uh, well, uh, and, and 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 mostly in Bob Welch and Sid Morris on piano, you know, uh, kind of more of a traditional style session. But uh, that that's the one that I, uh, I uh, you know, I produce and whatnot. So it was a thing between Kid and I that uh, kind of made this project get off, come off. And I mean, I was so happy and with the way it worked out because the sessions we had was, you know, it was just, the mood was just, man, it was tremendous. Man. That can on you doing ain't gonna fly with me. Now that dog won't hunt. You ain't gonna run me crazy. I'm all the way gone. I'm gonna change my phone number too. And they ain't gonna leave no father address. Yeah, I'm gone. And don't come by my mama's house looking for me. Cause I'm gone this time for real. Cat Bone and a Mojo too. It's Blues America. America. You're listening to Blues America, and I'm your host, Drew Verbis. I'm hanging out at the Chico Chisholm Memorial Studio in Phoenix at 4242 East University Drive, live with today's special guest, blues singer, Alabama Mike. Uh, this is a complicated question. Um, I truly believe that blues music is the foundation of American popular music. It was founded and invented within the African-American tradition by members of the black community. And that said... My question is, is there a resurgence of support for blues music in the black community? No. <laughs> you know, if they're listening to the music, then they would be supporting the music and buying the records and coming to the shows and things of that nature. But I don't see it getting popular. I see the people that have been supporting it Mm -hmm. Still supporting, and you go to a lot of blues shows. Most of the people, you know, they're kind of up in age. You don't see, unless you tour abroad, you really don't see a whole lot of young people, you know, in as that's that's so. When you go overseas, it's really go you go out of the country, different Mm -hmm. places. Then you see a whole lot of young people that really, you know, what I mean, Mm -hmm. uh, wants to be involved. 